Hello everyone. Today we invite you to an exciting adventure that will take you to the mysterious and deep world of the oceans. Oceans are the source of life for our planet. It holds many secrets not only on the surface of the water, but also in its depths. These depths still hold a great mystery for people. Undersea mountains, various sea creatures, rocky cliffs, and extraordinary geological formations are magnificent structures waiting to be discovered. In this documentary, based on the results of undersea research and scientific discoveries, we will explore how life in the deep oceans has adapted, what dangers it faces, and the ecological importance of these regions. We will also understand why we need to explore further in this mysterious world, and why we need to preserve these areas for future generations. The discovery of the Mariana Trench is an important scientific event that took place in the deep sea. The Mariana Trench is known as the deepest point in the world, and its discovery has made a great contribution to ocean science. The Mariana Trench is located in the Pacific Ocean at a point where the Pacific Plate and the Philippine Plate collide. Until the early 20th century, little was known about this region. There was curiosity and speculation about what was happening below sea level, but exploration of the deep sea was quite limited at that time. Submarines began to be used for research in the oceans since the late 19th century. However, these vehicles did not have the capacity to reach great depths such as the Mariana Trench at that time. The reason why submarine research began in the Mariana Trench was a great curiosity and inspiration about what could be found in the depths of the oceans. Scientists wanted to explore and understand the unknown worlds of the oceans. In particular, submarine research enabled the approach to the Mariana Trench. Exploration of the Mariana Trench began in the late 1930s. During this period, scientists focused more on the exploration of the deep oceans, along with the development of submarine technology. The Challenger Deep, the deepest point of the Mariana Trench, was first discovered in 1951. The first exploration of the Mariana Trench was carried out on January 23, 1960, by two submarine experts named Don Walsh and Jacques Picard. Their submarine, Trieste, became the first vehicle to reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench, with a depth of 10,929 meters. This dive was recorded as the deepest dive recorded in history. Trieste was a submarine 8.2 meters long and 3.7 meters high. This submarine belonged to the United States Navy in 1960. Trieste's hull was designed to withstand intense water pressure. The depth of the Mariana Trench caused the pressure of the water to be incredibly high. During the Trieste dive, thousands of tons of pressure were applied to the hull of the submarine. The submarine was meticulously designed to withstand these conditions. Trieste's arrival at the Mariana Trench provided the scientific world with various important data. By examining environmental conditions, the submarine has provided scientists with valuable information to understand how life in the deep oceans is possible. The Mariana Trench became the focus of various scientific research in the following years. The height of the Mariana Trench is the measurement from the sea surface to the bottom of the trench. The height of this pit from the sea surface to the deepest point of the pit is approximately 10,929 meters. It is approximately 2,550 kilometers long and 69 kilometers wide. The formation of the Mariana Trench occurs as a result of complex geological processes lasting millions of years. Plate tectonics and subduction play key roles in shaping the shape of this region. The Mariana Trench is located in the western Pacific Ocean. Geographically, it is in the eastern part of the Philippine Sea and east of the Yap Islands. This region is located west of the Pacific Ocean and east of the Asian mainland. 
It is a plate boundary between the Philippine Plate and the Pacific Plate. The Philippine Plate is sinking beneath the Pacific Plate, and this process triggers the formation of the Mariana Trench. This lower wall is called the subduction zone. The subduction zone beneath the Mariana Trench is a region where plates are pushed towards each other, and one plate moves under another. In this process, plates rub against each other, and this friction can cause earthquakes and volcanism. In subduction zones, large stresses occur due to the friction of two plates against each other. These stresses lead to the accumulation of energy that can cause earthquakes. In the Mariana Trench region, therefore, earthquakes occur frequently. The area around the Mariana Trench is full of active volcanic islands. These islands are formed when magma formed as a result of the melting of the subplate comes to the surface. As a result, volcanic islands such as the Mariana Islands appear in this region. Deep in the Mariana Trench, there are geothermal activities such as underground heat sources and hydrothermal vents. These activities result in the formation of unique ecosystems on the ocean floor. The Mariana Trench is an important research subject for scientists due to its geological structure and the subduction zone underneath. This region serves as a laboratory to help understand Earth's internal structure and plate movements. In addition, the marine creatures living in this region and hydrothermal activities are a matter of great interest to scientists in terms of biological and geochemical research. It is very important to withstand the high pressure in the Mariana Trench and to study the development of technologies used for undersea research. How submarines operate in these harsh conditions requires various engineering solutions and advancements. Submarines and such exploration vehicles are specifically designed and built to withstand these harsh conditions. The hulls of submarines are made of special alloys reinforced to withstand high pressure. These materials provide resistance to the high pressure deep in the pit. Submarines have specially designed compression chambers to control the air pressure inside them. These chambers prevent water pressure from damaging the submarine's hull. They have leak-proof doors and windows designed to keep water pressure out. This prevents the atmosphere inside the submarine from leaking out. ROV vehicles are undersea vehicles that are remotely controlled via wire or wireless. In the exploration of the Mariana Trench, ROV vehicles were used to work in harsh conditions and collect samples from the seafloor. Additionally, tools used in mapping and data collection tasks were also used. The design and engineering of submarines constantly evolves. This enables the creation of more advanced instruments to go deeper and operate in the deep sea for longer periods of time. Submarines have the ability to communicate with researchers on the surface. This supports functions such as streaming live videos, data transmission and remote control. The creatures living in the depths of the Mariana Trench are interesting organisms that survive in a very challenging and unique ecosystem. This deep-sea ecosystem has harsh conditions such as high pressure, darkness, low temperatures and often few food sources. Living things have various adaptations to cope with these challenges. Hydrothermal vents in the Mariana Trench represent a very interesting and unique environmental feature. These hydrothermal vents are important examples of how life is possible in the deep sea and how diverse adaptations can be. Hydrothermal vents are formed when hot springs beneath the ocean floor react with seawater. These hot springs have underground temperatures and contain various chemical compounds. The contact of this hot water with ocean water forms mineral precipitates, especially sulfur minerals. Hot water from hydrothermal vents is the primary energy source for microscopic organisms such as hydrothermal bacteria and archaea. These organisms produce energy by oxidizing chemical compounds released from hydrothermal vents. 
This process enables the conversion of inorganic chemical energy in the environment into biological energy. Organisms that live around hydrothermal vents include microscopic organisms such as bacteria and archaea. These organisms live in areas close to hot water sources coming out of hydrothermal vents. Since these organisms are microscopic, they are also a food source for other organisms that eat microscopic organisms. Some types of bacteria living in hydrothermal vents are especially sulfur bacteria, which produce energy by sulfur oxidation. These organisms can survive at high temperatures and high pressure in the inner regions of hydrothermal vents. They also live on sulfur compounds released from hydrothermal vents. Humpback shrimp live around hydrothermal vents, near areas with hot water currents. These shrimps feed on bacteria from hot water sources. At the same time, these shrimps live on mineral sediments formed by hydrothermal vents. For example, humpback shrimps prey on microplankton and bacteria in hydrothermal vents. Organisms in hydrothermal vents have special adaptations to cope with high temperature, high pressure and various chemical conditions. These adaptations enable organisms to adapt to these unique environmental factors. Deep-sea fish found in the Mariana Trench are organisms that sustain life in this challenging and unique ecosystem. These fish survive deep in the pit by adapting to harsh conditions such as high pressure, low temperature and little light. Therefore, fish in this region have special adaptations to adapt to these harsh conditions. Some fish species living in the deep sea have bioluminescent properties. That is, they can produce their own light. This feature is used for functions such as hunting, communication and camouflage. The eyes of deep sea fish have a special structure that can capture more light in low light conditions. This eye adaptation helps these fish hunt in low light and sense their surroundings. Deep sea fish in the Mariana Trench have fins that can withstand high pressure underwater. These fins allow fish to maneuver and chase prey in the deep sea. Deep sea fish feed by preying on organisms in their environment. Some prey on other organisms, plankton or small marine creatures living in the deep sea. There are many species of deep sea fish in the Mariana Trench that live at different depths and have different feeding strategies. For example, the food source of some species may be bacteria from hydrothermal vents. Many examples of these fish can be given. Dragonfish are deep sea fish that have bioluminescent properties. These fish, which can produce their own light, can camouflage and use light to catch their prey. Dragonfish in the Mariana Trench usually live very deep, thousands of meters deep. Grenadier fish living in the deep seas of the Mariana Trench have many species adapted to the different depths of the Mariana Trench. Some species can go deep into the pit, while others live near the surface. These fish's long, slender bodies and large eyes help them track prey in low light conditions. Abyssal sole fish live deep in the Mariana Trench and have a long, slender body. Their eyes are quite small because they often live in deep seas where there is little light. These fish's adaptations help them track prey in low light conditions. Toothbill fish, which live deep in the Mariana Trench, have large, pointed teeth. These teeth are used to hunt and tear apart other organisms. These fish's large eyes help them track prey in low light conditions. Squat crabs are a shelled organism that lives on the deep seafloor. These organisms live around hot water streams from hydrothermal vents and can develop symbiotic relationships with other organisms in this ecosystem. Organisms in the Mariana Trench have special structures that can withstand high pressure. Particularly organisms with hydrostatic skeletons provide resistance to this pressure. These structures help organisms maintain the shape and integrity of their bodies. 
organisms in the Mariana Trench must survive in an environment where food resources are limited. Therefore, some organisms have adapted to save energy and use nutrients more effectively. Deep-sea fish in the Mariana Trench are creatures with special adaptations to survive in this unique ecosystem. Deep-sea ecosystems provide great examples of how diverse life on our planet is and how well it can adapt to environmental conditions. Scientists learn more about marine biology and ecology by studying these deep-sea organisms. One of the most well-known names among those who have dived in the Mariana Trench is Oscar-winning director and marine researcher James Cameron. In 2012, James Cameron dived to the Challenger Depth, the deepest point of the Mariana Trench, with his submarine Deep Sea Challenger, which he designed. This historical dive by James Cameron was carried out to examine the mysterious world deep in the Mariana Trench and collect scientific data. Cameron's dive also went down in history as the second manned dive, following the first dive with the submarine Trieste by Jacques Picard and Don Walsh in 1960. James Cameron's diving has contributed to many areas of scientific research, including marine biology, geology and hydrothermal ecosystems. This experience increased interest in deep-sea sciences and helped better understand the mysterious world of the Mariana Trench. However, diving into the Mariana Trench is an extremely dangerous and technically complex task and requires experienced, well-trained teams. Submarine designers and scientists like Cameron have special training and experience to conduct such missions. Another important pit is the Puerto Rican Trench. The Puerto Rican Trench is a major geological formation in the Atlantic Ocean and lies between the island of Puerto Rico and Yonaguni Island in the Caribbean. This trench is a strategic passage connecting the Caribbean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. The Puerto Rican Trench is one of the Earth's deep ocean trenches and is quite large in size. The deepest point of this pit has a depth of approximately 8,376 meters. This measurement is the measurement from the water surface to the deepest point of the pit. It is approximately 800 kilometers long and 60 to 100 kilometers wide. These measurements express the length of the pit from west to east and its width from north to south. The width of the pit may vary in different regions. One of the first deep-sea explorations was made by American oceanographer William Beebe and engineer Otis Barden. In 1934, they examined the creatures in the deep sea by diving to 923 meters in an area near the coast of Puerto Rico with the submarine, Bathysphere. This discovery was a major milestone in deep-sea research. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has undertaken a number of marine science projects that support research and exploration in the Puerto Rican Trench. These projects involve scientific research to better understand the geological, hydrographic and biological characteristics of the pit. The geological structure of the Puerto Rican Trench is of great importance for understanding the formation and evolutionary processes of this trench. The Puerto Rican Trench occurs as a result of the tectonic interaction of the North American Plate and the Caribbean Plate. The Caribbean Plate is constantly sinking under the North American Plate. This conflict triggers the formation of the pit. As the Caribbean plate subducts beneath the North American plate, friction and subduction processes occur. This process causes the pit to form in depth. Beneath the Puerto Rican trench lies a deep sea ridge in the middle of the seafloor. This ridge supports plate movements on both sides of the seafloor. This ridge contributes to the formation of the pit. In the geological structure of the Puerto Rican trench, under the volcanic island chain Puerto Rican Trench located in the western part of the pit, as the Caribbean plate dives under the North American plate, volcanic activity begins in the places where the submarine volcanoes form 
come as a result of the melting of the plate and the emergence of this molten material to the surface. These volcanoes are concentrated in areas close to deep sea ridges beneath the trench. The activities of submarine volcanoes include lava eruptions, lava flows, and volcanic eruptions. These volcanoes occasionally cause hydrothermal activity, which also originates from hot water sources. These activities, such as hydrothermal vents, release important chemical compounds into the surrounding water and environment. Undersea volcanoes have been discovered thanks to modern undersea research technologies. Remotely controlled submarines, in particular, provide underwater researchers a way to study these volcanoes, equipped with high-resolution cameras and other measuring devices. These vehicles are used to go deep into the pit and observe volcanic formations and hydrothermal vents. 50 Limit Submarine volcanoes have significant impacts on the ecosystem of the pit. Minerals and chemicals resulting from hot water sources as a result of hydrothermal activity can be a source of food for the living creatures of this environment. At the same time, volcano eruptions and lava flows can be dangerous for surrounding marine life. The Puerto Rican Trench is a geologically active region known as an area where earthquakes occur regularly. This trough is located in a region where the North American Plate and the Caribbean Plate interact, and this constant plate movement causes earthquakes to occur frequently. Creatures in the Puerto Rican Trench have complex ecosystem connections with each other. Microorganisms in hydrothermal vents form the basis of the food chain and feed other organisms. These ecosystems are an important research topic for marine scientists and biologists. There are also mollusks, jellyfish species, sea sponges and various other marine creatures living in the deep sea. These organisms have biological adaptations appropriate to the depths of the pit. There are some species of fish that live deep in the Puerto Rican Trench. These fish have special adaptations that allow them to adapt to deep sea conditions. For example, they try to attract food around them by using their bioluminescence, light-emitting, abilities. Rima sponge is a type of sea sponge that lives in hot springs in hydrothermal vents. This organism is fed by hot water sources coming out of hydrothermal vents. Rima sponges live in a symbiotic relationship with microorganisms, especially in hydrothermal vents. The archaea species called Thermococcus verifilis lives deep in hydrothermal vents. This organism is adapted to conditions of high temperature and pressure and can survive in environmental conditions that sustain hydrothermal activity. The Pompeii worm is an interesting species of worm that lives near hydrothermal vents. These worms feed using chemicals from hot water sources. They are also resistant to sudden changes in temperature and live in colonies near hydrothermal vents. Some pufferfish species living deep in the Puerto Rican Trench have adapted to the high pressure conditions in the deep sea. These fish species are resistant to temperature changes and deep sea conditions. Jellyfish lake crabs are also the creatures found here. This unique crab species lives deep in the Puerto Rican Trench. They are generally recognized by their fin-shaped spines. These crabs feed on microorganisms in hydrothermal vents. These organisms are just a few examples that live in the unique ecosystems of the Puerto Rican Trench. Because the deep seas have very special physical conditions and harsh environments, the adaptations that these organisms have developed to survive are quite impressive and diverse. The study of these organisms provides important information in the fields of marine biology and ecology and contributes to the understanding of Earth's different ecosystems. The Puerto Rican Trench is known as a very interesting region for undersea exploration. This pit has been visited by various submarines and marine research technologies to investigate the mysteries of the deep seas and ocean.
Alvin is a leading submarine for ocean exploration and was also used in the Puerto Rican Trench. Alvin went deeper into the pit and examined hydrothermal vents and deep-sea ecosystems. Cruising Sun Submarine Used in the Puerto Rican Trench to study microbial life and environmental conditions in hydrothermal vents. This submarine has obtained important information in the depths of the pit. Another point is the Java Pit. The Java Trench is a major ocean trench geographically located in Southeast Asia. The geographical features and surroundings of this pit are of great geological and scientific importance. The Java Trench is located in the Indian Ocean, southwest of Indonesia. Geographically, it is approximately 3,300 kilometers, 2,050 miles, long and 320 kilometers, 200 miles, wide. There is Sumatra in the north of the pit, Java Island in the west and Bali Island in the east. This region also surrounds the greater Sunda Islands and forms most of Indonesia. The Java Trench is known as the second deepest ocean trench in the world. The deepest point of this pit comes after the Mariana Trench. It has a very impressive feature in terms of depth. The deepest point of the pit has a depth of approximately 7,725 meters, 25,344 feet. This region is a subplate boundary where seafloor plates collide. The Indian Plate, Australian Plate and Pacific Plate interact with each other in this region. The formation of the Java Trench begins with the interaction of the Asian Plate and the Australia Plate. These two large plates began colliding about 40 million years ago. As a result of this collision, the seafloor interacts with the ocean plates and a trench begins to form. As the Asian plate subducts beneath the Australia plate, it causes a deep trough. During this plate subduction, the depth of the trench increases and geological processes continue. Plate interactions around the Java Trench cause increased volcanism. In this process, volcanoes form on the seafloor and ridges form. Volcanic activity shapes the geological structure of the pit. Stresses and conflicts at plate boundaries around the Java Trench constantly cause earthquakes. This region is an earthquake zone where plate conflicts on the seafloor are intense. As the Indo-Australian plate subducts beneath the Sunda plate, a large trough forms in this region. This process is based on the principles of plate tectonics and is called subduction. During subduction, material beneath the subducting plate melts and forms magma. As this magma accumulates below the pit, it causes volcanic activity. There is intense volcanic activity around the Java Trench. A number of volcanic islets are found in this region, such as the islands of Java, Bali and Sumatra. The formation of volcanic islands occurs as a result of the underlying magma layers being pushed towards the surface. This process causes the seafloor to rise and volcanoes to form. These volcanoes form large volcanic mountains or cones that often cause eruptions. Eruptions can release lava, ash and gases into the atmosphere. Volcanic activity in this region poses a significant environmental and geological risk to surrounding local communities. Earthquakes, tsunamis and volcanic eruptions can cause such risks. The Java Trench is known as an extremely geologically active region due to plate tectonics and volcanic activity. These geological processes are an important area of research for scientists and are also of great importance for understanding the environmental impacts in this region. Additionally, these processes contribute to a better understanding of geological phenomena in this region and to the improvement of disaster management. The Java Trench is home to unique undersea ecosystems and creatures. This deep ocean trench is especially known as the home of deep-dwelling creatures. 
Deep sea fish living in the Java Trench have generally adapted to great pressure and darkness. Examples include species such as fangtooth fish, gulper mouthfish, and dragonfish. The unique jellyfish species found in this region are specialized for life in deep sea ecosystems. Some have unusual and transparent body structures. Large black-legged shrimps, which live deep in the Java Trench, are known for their unusually long legs and large eyes. These shrimps live around submarine hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are unique ocean environments that provide hot water and chemical riches. Organisms living in this region include giant shrimps, fungus-like creatures and bacteria. Sea sponges are also commonly found in the Java Trench. These sponges are specialized to filter nutrients and withstand the harsh conditions in the pit. Ice cream shrimps are organisms that live deep in the pit and are especially adapted to cold waters. There are mythological and legendary connections to this region in the local cultures around the Java Trench. Volcanic activities, in particular, frequently appear in the mythological stories of the local people. Legends associate Java's volcanoes and earthquakes with rituals to appease the anger of the gods or the forces of nature. Such mythological stories reflect local culture's relationship with nature and their sensitivity to natural disasters. The geographical features and volcanic activities of the Java Trench create historical and geological monuments for the local people. Especially since the eruptions of volcanoes in this region caused serious damage to their surroundings in the past, historical documents and monuments of these explosions are important. Such historical events help local people understand their past and environment. Archaeological discoveries around the Java Trench further highlight the historical and cultural importance of this region. These discoveries reveal traces of ancient life and historical ruins, illuminating the rich history of the Java Trench. The Sangaran Archaeological Site, located around the Java Trench, is known as an important site on Java Island containing the fossil remains of Homo erectus. These fossils were used to trace human evolution and shed light on the history of human species in this region. Trowulan is an ancient settlement located in the Mojokerto region of eastern Java. This region is known as the capital of the Majapahit Empire and forms an important part of Indonesia's historical heritage. Excavations at Trowulan have been used to trace the Majapahit Empire and elucidate the history of this period. Kandi Setho and Kandi Suka temples, known as ancient religious structures around the Java pit, these temples bear traces of the Hindu-Buddhist period and are part of Indonesia's historical and cultural heritage. Trunyan village, located north of the Java Trench, is famous for its ancient burial settlements. Archaeological studies conducted in this region are important in terms of understanding ancient burial traditions and culture. These archaeological discoveries highlight the historical and cultural significance of the Java Trench. This region is a place where ancient people lived, celebrated their beliefs, and shaped their history. Archaeologists and historians study the ruins and traces of the Java Trench and surrounding areas, helping us better understand the rich history of this region. These discoveries make a significant contribution to better understanding the history and cultural heritage of Indonesia and the region. The future of the Java Trench is an important component of conservation and scientific research. This region is of great importance both environmentally and scientifically and needs to be protected and further explored in the future. It is of great importance to protect the natural areas around the Java Trench. The biological diversity, endemic species and unique ecosystems in this region should be protected. The Java Pit is an important laboratory for scientific research.
geological processes, ocean sciences, biodiversity and other scientific issues should be investigated in this region. These studies contribute to our better understanding of the Earth's geological dynamics. Don't forget to subscribe to Science Pursuit for brand new documentaries and more scientific content.